Aloha everybody, this is Gigi from Kauai Community College. In this video, we will be talking about stinky radicals. Yes, we are solving these stinky radicals. Not onions, but the other kind. Okay, so here it is. Um, but before you start with stinky radicals, I would like for us to review onions. Okay, so that looks like an onion because it has layers. So what we can do now is just go ahead and undo the layers to get x by itself. So start with subtracting 1, divided by 2, then raise to the third power to um, raise both sides to the, to the third power to undo third root. Okay, and then um, you will have 2x minus 3 equals 8 plus 3 divided by 2 x is 11 over 2. And then don't forget, before you box that answer, you would have to go and check your solutions, right? So I am going to plug 11 over 2 in for wherever x is, which is right there. Okay, so um, 2, cancel with 2. I will have 11 minus 3 is 8. So 2 keep root of 8 plus 1, keep root of 8 is 2, so you'll have 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, and that is good. Okay, so that is an onion. Onion has layers, and we have done these before, so that's just a review for you. Okay, now, uh, what's not an onion? That's a stinky radical. Look at it. Why is that a stinky radical? Well, x is not just in one place, um, and there are two radicals there, right? So it's not an onion. That is not an onion. It's a stinky radical. So suppose you um, would say, well, if can I just go ahead and square both sides? Well, let's take a look. On the left-hand side, square will undo square root. So yeah, at least you'll get rid of the square root to on the right-hand side. And that will equal to 13 minus x, whereas the right-hand side, can you distribute that little square up here into each one of these? And the answer is no, 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 we cannot do that. That is a binomial square. That's a perfect square, right? A perfect square binomial. That would be a plus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Or if you um, don't have that memorized, then you can just go ahead and say square is that binomial multiplied by itself. And you can distribute and combine like terms. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and apply the perfect square property there. And so that would be a square plus 2ab plus b squared. Now here, square, square root, that will undo each other, and I will have 1 minus x, 1 plus 4 is going to be 5. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms and then write that on the left hand side. I will have 5 minus x plus 4 times square root of 1 minus x. Well, at least we got a one radical right away on the right. And uh, what we see now is another radical right here, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and um, get that radical by itself um, on one side and all the other stuff to the other side so we can solve. Now, lucky for us here, minus x on the left, minus x on the right. So that um, cancel out. And then you will have um, the 5, and we will subtract 5 to both sides. We'll have that. And wow, look at that. What is that? That is an onion. So what are we going to do next? Peel the layers. Divided by 4. Square both sides. And then solve for x. So x equals negative 3. Well, let's go and check our answer to make sure it's correct before you box it, right? So plug in negative 3, you'll have 1 minus a negative, so that would be plus 3, and then square root of 4 plus 2 
is equal to square root of 16. And I think that is correct because on the left hand side, I will have 2 plus 2 and on the right hand side, I will have 4. And the answer is good. Okay, so lesson to learn. When you have square roots on both sides, make sure one of them um, is on one side right here so that you can go ahead and undo that square root first. Okay, um, given what I just said, when you look at this here, that is not an onion. That's a stinky radical. So um, do we want to go ahead and square both sides the way it is here now? And the answer is, uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think I want to do that because on the left hand side, I have a very complicated perfect square. Now, if I actually add one to both sides, then I can actually get something that is um, doable on the um, right hand side, right? But even before that, we must take a look at the graph and visualize it to see if it is, if there actually is a solution. Because if we can visualize that there's no solution, then there's no point of doing all the algebra, right? So here we go. If we look at the graph on the left hand side, that would be left four down one and um, vertically stretched by two. And that would be the red graph right there. And then the blue graph would be just y equals x. And they do meet at um, x equal to five. So it looks like five is going to be our solution. So um, let's go ahead and proceed here. Um, in order to do that, we would go ahead and add one to the right hand side, and then we square. Now, um, squaring x plus one is a lot easier than squaring two square root of x plus four minus one, uh, meaning the left hand side as is, right? So um, whenever you can uh, try to separate the square root as much as possible. All right, so square both sides, um, two squares, four, okay, and then square root under that, and you will have four times x plus four. And on the right hand side, I have a perfect square, so it will be a square plus two ab plus b square. Distribute and make that into a standard quadratic form, meaning make it equal to zero so that I can factor and solve. Wait a minute. X could be 5 or negative 3? You would say, no, I don't think so. My graphs say the answer is 5, and there is only one intersection right here. Okay? Now, if you didn't visualize the graph, then you would have to go and check your answer, right? So if you plug in 5, um, you will have 2 times 3 minus 1 is 5, and that is perfectly fine. So 5 is your answer. But when you plug in negative 3, you will end up with 2 times 1 minus 1 is negative 3. And you will say, no way, that's not going to happen. So x equals negative 3 is not part of your solution. Okay, so let's work if we can just go ahead and visualize the graph. Okay, there is a very stinky problem, but nicely done because we can actually visualize it. Okay, um, here's another one. Again, do we want to go ahead and square the left-hand side and square the right-hand side as it is right now? And I would say, maybe not. Having this perfect square with two radical seems very complicated. Um, so let's go ahead and subtract square root of x to the other side so that now if I square both sides, I will have something that is manageable, okay? But again, before we even go and do all of this algebra, let's visualize it. So the left-hand side is, uh, I'm going to use this right here as the left-hand side. And I'm going to use this right here at my right-hand side. So left-hand side is um, a radical 
that got moved um, to the left three. And the right hand side is a um, square root graph that got moved up three and uh, flipped over. And that would be that blue one right there. And as you can see, looks like the solution is right here at x equal to one, right? So that's how we visualize that um, solution. So let's go and proceed to confirm that x is one algebraically. When we square both sides, on the left hand side, um, that is nice square, square root under each other, you'll just have x plus three. On the right hand side, that's a perfect square, so a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? So you will have 9 minus 6 square root of x plus square root of x squared. That will just give you x. Now, um, when you look at this, you would notice that um, there is a square root again here. So in order to undo square root, I would have to get that square root by itself to one side and then everything else on the other side so that I can square both sides and undo the square root. Again, lucky for us here, plus x plus x on both sides, so those are gone, right? Subtract x to both sides and x is gone. And so I'm going to go ahead and add negative 6, x, um, 6 square root of x over to the left and subtract 3. Look at that. I could at this point divide by 6, or I can just go ahead and square them the way they are, right? So x is equal to 1. Nice. Uh, we can actually plug 1 in and check our solution. So you will have 1. Um, actually, that's not it. Um, that 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, and that is a good answer. All right, one more. Look at this beautiful looking equation. When you look at it, you're like, oh, that's an onion. That's a radical onion. I can just go ahead and um, start peeling off layers. So there we go. Minus four, square both sides. And then add one, x equals 17. But then before you box that answer, you better go and check it. So when you do check and you plug in 17, wherever x is, you would say, oh, wait a minute, that is 4 plus 4. 4 plus 4 equal to 0. No way, that's not going to happen. So x equals 17 is not your solution, and you get to say no solution here. Now, all that work and no solution? Hmm. You know what, if you actually look at the problem from the beginning and have thought about it for a little bit, you can see that the square root of something is going to be a positive number. So you have a positive number plus four. That is never going to be zero. So there is no solution. And that's all you have to do if you just pause and thought about it before you um, dive into solving algebraically. Okay. Now, another way also to check is, as I said, visualize your solution. Look at this. The left-hand side is a radical. Move right one up four. That would be that red graph. And the right-hand side is y equal to zero, which is the x-axis and they never meet. So there's no solution. So there's two ways there that you could have thought about um, before you proceed to do busy work, right? So um, the lesson here is, you know what, take a minute to think. Your brain is wonderful, let it work for you.